Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another edition of Underrated Anomalies, the segment where we celebrate the career of an actor or actress who, despite achieving some success, for one reason or another, never seemed to get the full credit they deserved. The world of superheroes lost one of its most iconic personalities this month. Adam West, best known for his role as Batman, passed away at the age of 86 after a brief battle with leukemia. To many, he would remain the image of the caped crusader in the 60s William Dozer television ca camp fest, Batman. But there was also more to this actor than just a cape, a bat-shaped cowl, and shark-repellent bat spray. Not yet. Totally not yet. Born on September 19, 1928 in Walla Walla, Washington, William West Anderson grew up actually a fan of comic books. The Batman being one of his favorites. What are the odds? Also a movie buff, his heroes included John Wayne and Burgess Meredith. And again, what are the odds he would one day find himself fighting West as the wise quacking villainous penguin in the Batman TV show? His career in media actually began when he was working as a local disc jockey in college. West spent two years developing military television stations after he was drafted into the army. He soon found himself at a children's show shortly after called The Kinney Popo Show. No, I'm not drunk, that's the title. Where he would eventually co-star with a chimp. The goal of every actor, right? In 1959, William West Anderson became Adam West and found himself some work in many low-grade pictures, including The Girl Who Knew Too Much and also playing alongside the Three Stooges in a comedy called The Outlaws Are Coming. The 60s found Adam West working in movies such as Robinson Crusoe on Mars and The Young Philadelphia. He was also the spokesman for Nestle Quick, playing a bumbling sort of Maxwell Smart spy mascot type. Some people will do anything to get rich, quick. However, the hands of both fate and his Nestle commercials were upon West as he found himself reluctantly auditioning and getting the role in the Batman television series. At first, West wasn't sure of this career move. After all, playing a comic book character wasn't what it was today. Typecasting can be a rough ride for an actor, and such was the case with Adam West as it was for William Shatner as Captain Kirk, Linda Carter as Wonder Woman, Bella Lugosi as Dracula, and pretty much the cast of Seinfeld, unless you're Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Somehow she still manages to find work. Still though, Adam West's Batman was a home run. And however he felt about it then, in his later years, West would certainly embrace his forever fictional namesake, appearing in specials, conventions, charity events. And ironically, while his version of Batman is often snubbed by many fans of the comic book character, who was anything but campy and colorful, West's Batman remains the definitive image in the minds of the public. Whether it's the theme song, Robin's holy quips, Holy stuffy! Holy ravioli! Holy serpentine! Holy grammar! Holy safari! Or the guest villains ranging from Burgess Meredith, Eartha Kitt, and Cesar Romero, to Shelley Winters, Roddy McDowell, and Vincent Price, Adam West and the Batman TV show not only widened the Caped Crusaders audience, but also introduced a new generation to an iconic comic character that helped keep the Batman comic books flourishing. This is Batman. And Robin, the boy wonder. In the early 80s, there were a couple of DC children cartoons that featured both Batman and Adam West doing Batman's voice. West also did manage to find himself in the now cult film favorite, The Happy Hooker Goes Hollywood. It's an actual film that's really good. And will continue to make television appearances as himself in shows like The Simpsons and The Critic. In the 90s into the 2000s, Adam West would find himself busier than ever, making appearances in television and movies like Drop Dead Gorgeous, Meet the Robinsons, and Chicken Little. In 1994, West wrote his book, Back to the Bat Cave, which eventually inspired a very bizarre television special that had himself and Burt Ward playing themselves, remembering their days on the set of Batman and reuniting them with Batman villains Frank Gorshin and Julia Newmar, AKA the Riddler and Catwoman, with all of them going after someone who steals the classic TV Batmobile while remembering their days on the show. Yeah, it's something like that. It was, it was pretty strange. Toward the late 90s, Adam West would again find himself playing himself, sort of, as Mayor Adam West in the hit series Family Guy. Nobody messes with Adam Wee. The role once again catapulted him into the spotlight, introducing him to yet a new generation of audiences, though not so much 
a bat as a crazy out of his mind mayor who's a few ballots short of an election. This is how we did that, that you didn't know. Adam West may have never wowed the Academy or found himself in the most sophisticated of roles or movies, but so what? He's achieved more than just an Oscar or a Golden Globe. He's become a part of our entertainment culture. He loves acting and always took pride in the roles given to him, even the happy hooker one. He could be comedic, charming, sinister, hilarious, or suave. Yeah, he may be forever remembered as Batman, but to many, he will also be remembered as THE Batman, the one that trumps them all. And West himself has been the first to always credit Batman for his claim to fame, even through the toughest of times. As for me personally, my love and, let's face it, obsession with Batman and superheroes in general will always be with the comic books and movies, but it all started for me as a boy in my living room watching the Batman TV show on reruns and watching Adam West as Batman. So to you, Adam West, I grab my back shark repellent and salute you. Gone, yes, but never forgotten as you soar toward that great bat signal in the sky.